Uh, good evening. I'd like to call the select board meeting to order for this Tuesday, December 17th. Uh, let us stand. Actually, we have some scouts here. So, scouts, would you like to come lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? <laughs> I say that as a question, but. Thank you. What a great <coughs> yeah. 800 people doing the pledge it was fabulous. 890 plus. Yeah. All right, so we will start with our public forum. Is there anyone who would like to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government? Wonderful, hearing none. First is the, first up would be the consent agenda. Um, <coughs> The consent agenda item is to approve the December 3 and December 9 minutes. Would any member like to break any of those out? Hearing none, I would request a motion to approve so the moved, meeting. Second. Chairman. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? This abstains. It carries. Thank you. Um, third item up is, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here. So I did. I missed the proclamations. That was not in order in my uh, chair playbook. Take that up with the town manager afterwards. Uh, the select board will, actually guys, come on up. The select board will consider approval of proclamations for three Eagle Scouts of Hopkins and Troop Number 1. Ryan Canfield, Andrew DeLiva, and Ethan Ritterbush. How are you guys? Welcome aboard. Congratulations. Um, why don't we start with Ryan? Ryan, why don't you tell us a little bit about your the project and uh, what you did? Mm -hmm. My project was a walkway over by the HCA or the Hopkinton Center of the Arts. It involved a 100 foot long stone dust path cutting through the gardens, making it easier for students to get between parking lots. Nice, and how did you accomplish your goal? I accomplished it by um, getting other scouts and my friends to help me uh, remove the, the grass and the rocks, and then refill it with all sorts of stone dust and gravel okay. to help with water, like flooding. Awesome. Were there any companies in town or any, uh, any vendors out there that you might want to say thanks to for donations or anything like that? Um, Milford Supply Depot, mm -hmm. uh, McIntyre and Loam, and then the Department of Works. Okay, Department of Public Works. Um, second. I like when you're ready to get a point on me. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, great job. Congratulations. I will open it up to the board for further discussions. Mr. Catino. <laughs> My goodness. Well, congratulations. Uh, it, it's, uh, as I say every time, it's, uh, it, it, it's an honor to be up here and, and uh, uh, to welcome you guys. Uh, it, you know, Eagle Scout's not easy. I, I didn't get there. I, I, just, I dropped out, and uh, I, I look back now and say it's something I really should have finished. And, you know, it's something that's going to be on your resume forever. Um, you know, it's, people are going to look at that and realize that, that, that you guys have really accomplished something huge. You know, and it's hard to do it with, with your peers out having fun and doing other things and with sports and school and, you know, and then and, and college stuff and all that stuff. It's really tough to, to, to complete. So it's, it's something you should be really proud of. And uh, congratulations. Great job. I want to say congratulations. I think it's incredible that uh, you guys come up with these ideas and you organize and get the job done, um, you find vendors and, and make these things happen. I, I'm truly impressed with uh, every one of these projects I've heard um, and being able to find you know, companies and to, to donate product and, and help you with these things is, is incredible. Uh, as John and everyone has said, this is, uh, this is something that you're going to carry with you forever. You're gonna, as you go, grow up, you're always going to be an Eagle Scout and that's something that people are going to notice. So congratulations and uh, awesome job. Where'd go? And where did you say you put this trail in? Just um, over by the Hopkinton Center of the Arts. By the the ice arts Council. Well, I guess on behalf of the town and the Arts Council. Thank you very much. And I'll refrain with the rest of my remarks so I find out what you other two did too. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Hur. So I run on occasion, as you may know. Mm. Um, and I ran by the day that uh, Ryan was out there, the whole army of people working on this thing. I was a really impressed. I, right away, I'm like, this has got to be an Eagle Scout thing. Mm -hmm. But it was really well organized. Everything was staged, I thought, well. Uh, I could tell, you know, they had a lot of different people doing different things at the same time. And it, it, was, it was an operation, and it was really good to see that. Uh, I've since gone back a couple times on my jogs to check it out. It looks awesome. And uh, I think it's a real nice asset for the community and a really job well done. And to my colleagues' points, this is something that you can be proud of for the rest of your life. The path's going to be there forever. Uh, so whenever you come back to town and visit and so forth as you get older, uh, you'll be very proud looking at it. So great job. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, next up would be Andrew. Andrew, Hi. how are you? I'm good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the project that you did? So I uh, rebuilt the existing fire pit at Faith Community Church. Um, they had a fire pit, but it was really worn down and there was really nowhere for anyone to gather around it. So I tore down the old one and then rebuilt it in a new location. And then I filled the surrounding area with um, the cobblestone border and I filled the inside of that with P-stone and built a path from the parking lot uh, onto the fire pit. That's awesome. How long did it take you? Um, I want to say around two months. Really? Yeah. Did you have a lot of help? Sorry? Did you have a lot of help? <clears throat> yeah, I did. Who, who helped you? Um, my dad a lot and um, a lot of the scouts from the church. Good. That's awesome. Any businesses in town you wanted to thank for? Uh, McIntyre and Loam and uh, the Legacy firm. Awesome. And I will open it up to the board and I will start with Mr. Herr. So I didn't run by this particular project because <coughs> if I ran down East Main Street there, I'd probably get killed. Um, but, uh, you know, the, just like the others, you know, and we've had so many of these come in over the years now. Uh, I, I gotta believe that Hopkinton puts out more Eagle Scouts than any other community this size in Massachusetts. I don't think we have a stat on that, but I'd be very interested in seeing that uh, because so many young people come through here uh, making this great achievement uh, and getting it done. It's, it is amazing. Um, but thank you for doing your work and thank you for achieving this. You set a great example for lots of other young kids in town, Andrew. And uh, I'm really excited that uh, that fire pits there. I'm gonna go check it out now. I won't run over there though. Um, and I'm sure they have some nice gatherings around that too. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mary Jo? Well, I am a big fan of fire pits. I have a friend who has a, uh, built a restaurant in Maine called Beach Fire and he's got a big fire pit out front and I think that fire pits are one of the best places for people to gather and talk and relax and uh, communicate with each other and so I thank you for that. Mr. Catino, basically it's great there's great skills to learn. Um, so did you, was everything just dry fit or did you have to use um, mortar or anything or did you? So I used some like really quick adhesive um, and yes some mortar for the cobblestones around it. Great, it, you know, it's, it's stuff that you're gonna, you, again, it's a, it's a skill that you're gonna take and, 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 and utilize in a lot of other projects so as, you, as you go through life. Great, great. congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Lester. Great job. I'm curious how you I came to identify the need. Like how did you, how did you come to realize that this needed to be redone? Um, so we personally as a troop used the fire pit occasionally um, for, just some various troop activities, uh, obviously having a fire there. Um, and every time it's always really wet down there because it's kind of like where the rain drains to. And it, it seems to like consistently be wet every time we use it. So I kind of had it in the back of my mind and then the church uh, reached out to the troops that if any Eagle Scouts um, or anyone working on Eagle Scout wants to help um, and do this as their Eagle project, um, we'd be happy to help them with that. So I was the first one, I just jumped on it and I I'm like, I want to do that. <clears throat> That's awesome. So I, I, what I love about it is the initiative in that, you know, you, you, you see something and you identify that this needs to be, need, be repaired or this could be better this way. And then you go out and execute it. Fantastic job. I'm glad that you're in our town. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and Ethan, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Where did you do your project? Uh, I uh, worked on the Hughes uh, property up on Hayden Row. I, had to, I added two smaller walking trails in addition to the trail that was already there. And I took out a crossing of a stream that was uh, interrupting 
uh, the flow of water and the wetlands and replaced it with a more uh, permanent uh, bridge that would allow water to flow underneath more naturally. Awesome. How long did that take you? Uh, actually, I got, <coughs> I got it done relatively quickly within, uh, within the month of August, so within one month. Oh, nice. You're motivated. I don't know where you get that from. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations. Any businesses in town that, that helped you out or people that you want to mention or? Well, I guess I would like to, uh, I guess I would like to thank Lowe's uh, generous return policy for when you buy the wrong size wood. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, that's a good life lesson right there. Yep. <laughs> I'd like to thank, uh, you know, the friends and family and you know, fellow scouts who donated time and money to my project and also to uh, Peter Lagoy, who's uh, on the behalf of the town provided me with a lot of guidance on how to, how to progress and help. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Nasrullah. So you replaced a, a bridge that crossed a wetland? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> and you got all your permits? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another that permitting was. regime can be a bear, huh? <laughs> no, that's incredible. That's... Um, you know, building these bridges. Uh, when we when we when I hike these trails and when I bike these trails, uh, you know, these these bridges are critical. Uh, just being able to get over, get from one spot to the other. Uh, so I think it's fantastic. And you know, to, to again identify the need and go out and execute. Incredible. Now, th now this is uh, this is one that uh, that I did that I walked on. Uh, I was with the uh, with the trails club. And uh, we did a, we did a couple walks on that trail, and actually my wife came that one. That one. It's a great job. It really is. You know, it was it, and there was it was absolutely a need. You know, and, and as a as a trail advocate, I I, I love that the, the scouts uh, help out so much with uh, so many of our trails. So any other scouts that are out there, uh, we use we have more more trails that need help. So thank you so much for doing that. Really appreciate it, Mr. Her. That trail, Ethan, does that connect? It doesn't connect to the center trail directly, does it? Not yet. <coughs> Not yet. But that's kind of in the plan someday that that'll all come together. So where does that trail run from? If you go, if you go into the Hughes property where the new parking area is now, yeah. you go straight back, right? Yeah, it goes straight back. Yeah. And uh, actually, I've been working on it recently, even since I finished my project, expanding uh, that section, the multi-use trail. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's extending to, uh, I forget what the neighborhood's called, but yeah. Okay. Blackthorn Circle? Great. It's one uh, of them, but I, there's one specific uh, road that's left my mind right now. So if you were to run down Center Trail and then go behind the schools and go up to Chamberlain, I think it is, and then take a left, you could go then take a right onto that trail. Is that true? As part of our cross country, we actually did do a route involving both Center Trail and that trail. It's kind of a, it's, it, they don't connect, you know, it takes a while to get from one to the other, but you know, they do a good run together. Great. Right. Okay, I'll go check that out. Thank you for doing that. I think uh, any time that we can connect the trails, whether it be just over one little wetland area or throughout the whole town, uh, you're doing a great service to the community. It'll last forever. So another project that's going to be there forever, which is really cool, and you should be very, very proud of it. Uh, knowing your parents and their activity level in town, I'm not surprised to see you helping out in this way too. And uh, we're lucky to have people like you doing this kind of work. So great job. Thank you. Mary Jo. Well, I, trails are another, they're fabulous and they're just fabulous here in Hoppington and it's, it's a wonderful thing. The one thing I, I like best about it is to take a walk and you know, feel yourself out there and it uh, gives you a chance to think and contemplate and, uh, and also for those that run and, and do activities. Uh, it's just something wonderful for everybody in the community. So we thank you very much. Yeah, so to the three of you, <clears throat> it's, uh, I can remember sitting up here on the board uh, back when it was the Board of Selectmen, and um, I can remember seeing the first Eagle Scouts come through, thinking how awesome it was. And it really is, it's awesome. Like, you guys have made, like, the CEO of your, of your troop. You can't go any higher than this, correct? Like, this is as high as you can go? Technically. So, <laughs> so maybe, else you can do later on. But. Maybe you're like the COO then. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, <laughs> it it's very impressive. The like Mr. Hurst said, the amount of Eagle Scouts that we've had come through, but it hasn't lessened its luster. Like right. every single thing that you guys do, every project that that all of you you three and the probably the twenty or so that that we've um, given proclamations to uh, on my 
uh, time on the board. Uh, none, none have done the same project. Uh, I will say that most that come up here thank McIntyre Loom. Um, <laughs> they're a very generous and wonderful company. Um, but it really is, it's, it's, it's great to see the, uh, the younger, I won't say the kids, because you guys are far more than kids, but the younger generation come up and, and have a civic-minded responsibility and to follow through with that. So it's a wonderful job. So with that, <coughs> we have um, proclamations for all three. Uh, the Town of Hopkinton, uh, the Hopkinton Select Board hereby recognize uh, Ryan Canfield, Andrew DeLiva, and Ethan Ritterbush, Troop 1, Hopkinton Mass, Boy Scouts of America. Therefore, the Select Board of the Town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, join with your families and friends in recognition of your achievements in attaining the rank of Eagle Scout, signed under our hand in the seal of the 17th day of December, 2019. So thank you guys very much. We'll start, who do we get here? Ryan is first. Go yep, and we'll come out and take a photo with you guys if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful job, congratulations. Good job, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, Andrew. Good job. Andrew, I'm afraid I butchered your name. How do you say it? Is it? Delayable. Delayable. All right, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good job, Andrew. Congratulations. And Ethan Ritterbush. Congratulations. congratulations. Thank you very much. So we'll go over there and take a photo. Question for you. Yeah. Who comes up with those designs where it's wide and then it gets narrow and then widens again? Uh, I think there's actually a, a, someone at the Trails Committee who won't be this committee. Okay. Yeah, when I'm going fast on my mountain bike, I'm going off. I don't care. After you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what do you want the bad yeah. I would say we would probably help since this table is lower. Well, you guys did a good job presenting too. Yeah, it's not easy standing there and having people ask questions. We were asking these little bit. We did a good job. What would you like? Oh, I don't know if we want the TV in. I know when I see the three, it's that's the good one. Company phone. <laughs> so the one thing we forgot to say also is congratulations to the parents for all your hard work getting these guys to where they are right now. I like how they stand there and Got a couple of jokes going and stuff. It's good. Couple All right. <clears throat> so license renewals. There are several annual licenses issued by the board which require, well, I'm sorry, which expire at the end of 2019. The annual license renewal process includes annual inspection and review by other departments, including the building department, the fire department, the board of health. Two of the businesses and their licenses which are before us this evening have not satisfied all the requirements and therefore and there are contingencies noted. And since the agenda packet was published, there have been two changes. Uh, number one, Central Public House is all good and there are no contingencies. And number two, Hiller's Pizza applied for renewal of their common Victrollers license after the agenda was posted. There is also one business currently licensed that has not applied for renewal, Vermeer Northeast Class One and Class Two licenses. Mr. Kamalo, do you have anything to add to this? Yes. Um Item number number one, um, the central public house, as you reported to the uh, through your notes, 
that's been taken care of. Then item number two, bitter sweet. The building department has now received the plan that would satisfy the ZBA condition, as well as the Board of Health. Yes, as well as the Board of Health has, yeah. Yeah, the Board of Health sent us an email saying that they are satisfied and will approve uh, this location uh, first thing tomorrow morning. So, so you recommend for oh. approval on that one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're recommending for approval. Can I have the, the packet? Okay. Subject, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's subject to the final uh, fire department inspection. Okay. So, uh, okay, may I ask you? Yeah, um, so, are we okay on number four? Oh, no, I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm going to the list. Oh, I thought, you I thought you were jumping ahead. Okay, yes. right. Yeah. So, Mr. Kamalo, on number two, are we okay to... Where do we sit with um, Bittersweet? Yeah. Building Department, Board of Health have been satisfied and the board may approve this license tonight subject to the final okay. fire department inspection. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. And then number four, the Hopkinton Tennis and Swim Club. Um, we are all set, recommend approval tonight. Good. And then number five, Hope You. Yeah. The board may approve tonight subject to uh, the building and fire department inspections. Okay. Satisfactory, yeah, satisfactory inspections. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, what about Hiller's Pizza? Hiller's Pizza, no contingencies. So That's okay. Yes. Okay. So, do you want me to do my usual reading, Mr. Uh, so, if we're going to have to go uh, one by one on these, John. Okay. So, if you want to. So, uh, uh, through the chair. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to make a motion for number one, uh, MGL chapter 138.12, all alcohol beverages to um, DKW LLC, otherwise known as Central Public House, a, um, a common victory license, uh, entertainment, and all alcohol beverages. Second. Any further discussion? Any violations of that license to date? <clears throat> None reported. Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Okay, that's good. It's approved. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, number two, uh, MGL chapter 138.12, wine and um, malt beverages. For Dunn and Oliveria, LLC, otherwise known as Bittersweet. For Common Victual License, wine and malt beverages, <laughs> entertainment. Uh, and uh, uh, these, this other stuff as written with uh, contingencies uh, uh, for a uh, for the fire department uh, no occupancy permit uh, that it uh, be done. Mm -hmm. Is that in order, Mr. Kamala? With, uh, with the with the of a, 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 a what's the contingency? Yeah subject to a satisfactory fire department inspection. Okay. Is that in your motion? Absolutely. How about Board of Second. Health? Second. Is that okay? Board of Health is all set. Yeah, Board of Health. Okay. Which okay. one was this again? This is bittersweet. 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 Okay. So I seconded that. Okay, any further discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. So Bittersweet uh, has a motion on the table to approve the license that includes, there's alcohol in there, correct? Yeah, yes. So when will that license be exercised upon? In other words, when is that business going to reopen? Yeah, why? You want to see it? I just need a, I just need a date. I don't need to just... Saturday or Monday. Okay. I'm good. Okay. All right. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? It carries. Good. Mr. Martino? Um, I'd like to, through the chair, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, for uh, MG... You can just read that. Okay. The Belladora Corporation, uh, otherwise known as the Vin Bin, for a wine and malt beverages uh, retail package store and common victual licenses. There are no contingencies. Okay. Board, anyone have any? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none. All has, there, <laughs> has there been any recent violations on that license, Mr. Kamala? Vin Bin, I don't believe so. 
and I emphasize the word recent because there had been a violation in the past that the mass that went on probation. Yep. Took the uh, whatever in Boston took care of it. Yep. yep. Okay, so we can't have any more violations on that license, but I'm good. Right. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. It carries. Uh, the next one is very general on premises uh, Hopkinton Swimming Tennis Club. Uh, general on premises all alcoholic license and entertainment um, pending uh, contingent uh, Upton full permit, building permit being issued anticipate um, 1988 square foot lounge dining area and seasonal pool area hmm. any further discussion well, wait it, it construction on this hasn't a, even started a second. It. I'll second it okay. oh. Okay, now, there we go. I was just gonna say, if construction hasn't even started yet, isn't this jumping the gun a little bit to give them a liquor license? And they've had it. And it, it they've we don't, had it? Yep, they've had it, this isn't new. And this is given to them by the ABCC and not by us. And how long has it been in the works? Three or four years. And that doesn't inhibit us from giving a liquor license to no, he's starting. He, he, he's, he's in process right now. He, okay. I mean, there, there's, there's a construction. No there's construction a there's a, a, a long story that's associated with this. Okay. And it's uh, it's one that is a very amicable one. Okay. Um, he had, he he, uh, he owns a, a company that sells um, small lawnmowers and commercial lawnmowers and snowblowers and things like that and. Uh, he didn't want to, with the drought and the no snow that we had had over the years, he did not want to overextend himself for this swim and tennis club to maybe have to lay some people off. So uh, everything is in order. He's uh, and he's moving ahead. It's been going through all the boards now. So he's hoping to break ground very soon, from what I understand. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Carries. Okay, the next one is a convictual license for Hopio, 36 Main Street, Hopton, Mass. Um, convictual license, uh, entertainment, and uh, uh, that one does have the uh, subject, to. subject to the fire department uh, putting a, uh, <laughs> with fire department inspection. Okay. Yeah, it's both building and fire department. Building. Oh, building. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Building and fire department. Okay. Is it seconded? Second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? The next one Paris. is um, uh, through the chair. I make a motion for a marathon pizza, a common victory license, and there are no contingencies. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? It carries. The next one well, is the next one is uh, through the chair. If I may, the, the next one is uh, Hiller's Pizza, a common victory license, and there are no contingencies. Okay, second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. And one abstention. I mean, no abstentions. So four to one to zero. Carries. Good. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Catino. Uh, let's see. So we're going to move on to the. Oh, that clock apparently is not working. That just scared me that I was two and a half hours <laughs> late. <laughs> Did you meet you? Uh, so, uh, special town meeting election date selection. The select board will set the date for a special town election pursuant to articles 3, 4, and 5 on the December 9, 2019 special town meeting and we'll consider signing the special town election warrant uh let's see mr kamalo is this something that you're going to help us out with or are we just going to pick a date yeah um by way of background there was a preliminary discussion uh amongst the board at your last meeting and in fact uh tonight we have both the town clerk uh who will walk the board through um, different dates that have been discussed, uh, outlining their pros and cons. I believe we also have the school committee chair uh, to explain why February 3rd makes sense for the school committee's projects. Okay. 
Mr. Deegan, welcome aboard. Good evening, everyone. So we were able to identify a couple dates just to, and I, I'm just going to explain what dates we have and kind of the rough reasons why we're presenting those dates. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It's really going to be up to you to decide what date is the best one for the town. Uh, so the first one that we looked at based on the timeline that the school department and school committee presented was for February 3rd. Uh, the benefit of that one is we get everything done within the schedule that's already planned out. Cost of it is it's not a budgeted election, so we'd have to find funds somewhere else for it to transfer into it. The next option would be, would be March 3rd, which would be the primary date. Uh, we talked a little bit about that last time, and that one would be, uh, we'd get some cost savings on it by combining the two. It would still be everything could get done in the springtime, but it does add a layer of complication for sometimes for voters and election workers. Uh, though uh, I had the fortune too of talking to Elaine who has been able to uh, experience a similar type of local election embedded into a state election of some kind and she said it wasn't too difficult on her as a voter so that was a good little bit of insight uh, and the other one would just be the possibility of legally it could still be done for May 18th the annual town election uh, now obviously the benefit of that one is just that it's already a scheduled election it's budgeted it's ready to go and it would just be as simple as throwing it onto an existing ballot. Um, obviously the downside is that I don't know how it's, that would affect the school department's planned schedule. Uh, so, I mean, it's one of those things where it's gonna be balancing a whole bunch of factors, but uh, I, I can answer any questions anyone has on any of those dates. I have no questions. Mr. Deegan, what date would you prefer as the town clerk? Hey. <laughs> um, I, so I'm not really, uh, so my gut feeling is to go towards a date where we're not going to be spending anything additional for it. So it would either be March or May. Um, so, I mean, there's the additional complication with March that makes May more appealing. But it's also one of those situations where if the cost is going to be definitely significantly more and outweighs the cost of trying to find the, you know, the amount that might cost us for the election to be held regardless of when, then, you know, it's something that we should definitely look into. I mean, with March, the other thing is it's still we're printing a separate ballot. I did look into it. Like I had mentioned, we have to put it on a separate ballot for the uh, for the local election separate from the primary ballots. So we're still going to be printing those ballots as opposed to in May, we would be printing it on the same ballots as all the local officials. So March still gives us a significant amount of savings that we could more easily kind of wiggle into. Okay. But I don't really have a specific preference on any of the dates. And you're quite a politician. <laughs> and as the school committee chair, I mean, what do you think? What, I know the schedule has something to do with this in terms of getting designs going and things like that, but what's the preference of the school committee? Um, good evening to all of you and through the chair. Um, we haven't uh, necessarily taken a vote as a school committee on this matter. There is a general, so I can speak to my general understanding of it. Uh, I believe there was a conversation today um, with Mr. Kumalo and our superintendent about the dates. And the February 3rd date was still being discussed uh, for a few reasons. One uh, was that would allow us to start the process a little early with regard to the bids. And my understanding again is that the sooner we get into the process, um, the more competitive bids we are expecting back. So that's one reason. And the second was what we had discussed last time around, that there is a potential confusion um, around the March 3rd with the presidential primaries. So those were the two reasons why the February 3rd date was being preferred, and that's what was discussed. So um, that's where we are. The preference, again, is the sooner uh, 
we are able to get through this, the easier it, it would be, and it would be beneficial from a cost perspective. And then I have one more, if I could, please. Mr. Kamalo, do you have an opinion about what date we should go with? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I believe the school superintendent uh, working through the design team and I think in the individual conversations with, with school committee members, uh, he has argued f convincingly for the February 3rd date. I do understand that uh, this date would result in additional costs to the town. However, uh, her viewpoint is that any delays in bidding the school projects uh, would be more costly to the community. Mary Jo? Well, I, uh, I have been giving this some thought, and uh, I, I just hate to see three elections in, in a matter of months. I mean, I think people, we have a hard time getting people out to the polls as it is. And with the presidential primary, and then our own election in May, I think that a third election in February is just going to be an awful lot for the populace. I would like to see it combined with the March election, the federal election. Mr. Keenan, anything? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, in as much as, as I'd like to combine the elections to try and save some money, uh, we're also looking at uh, it's about $10 million. And um, I, I might be it might be pennywise and pound foolish if we could if we could save you know tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars if there are more people able to uh, bid on, on some of these contracts that as, as confusing as it might be or it, tough to get people out to vote yeah th these things did did pass unanimously at town meeting and um, I really think that to, to be able to get to get out there as quickly as possible, so as early as possible, is what I is what I'd go for. Okay, Mr. Kamala, I mean uh, Nasrullah. Um, I mean, I think I think everyone has some some very good points. What is the cost of having like <clears throat> as it being a non-budgeted item? It can vary uh, based on what we can figure out for cost savings, but. It's going to be roughly between seven and ten thousand um, dollars. It's one of those things that, yeah, if it is going to be a significant savings to just do it earlier, then yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things with well, cost, <laughs> cost benefit analysis for it. So that's um, my next question: is is getting out early? I mean, is that going to if we don't if we if we don't get out early enough, is it going to cost us in the ten? Well, and the other thing that's something to keep in mind as well is that with February, you're going to run into risk of weather uh, interfering. And unlike town meeting where you can move it if need be because of bad weather, if we get a snowstorm on election day, then that election's held regardless. Uh, and we need to make sure that we can still make, get the election workers in and make sure there's still room for people to come and vote at the polls, but we also then run the risk of a lower turnout as well because of dangerous conditions. Uh, and that's just part and parcel with when you do elections in the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, granted, you know, there's still that risk in February or in uh, March, but you know, that's New England for you. And so the, the, the confusion that you're concerned about is, I it's, mean, it's, it's, it's still gonna, I mean, there's gonna be like the president, presidential election questions and then there's going to be town it just requires a little bit of extra training most likely for my election workers I mean it's it's really not that much of a of an extra burden on it it the only additional cost that comes with this is just printing the additional ballots and then uh, the election worker trainings are we already have one scheduled in January so if uh, regard if we picked March as the, the date, then I would just include in that training what we would do in the case of there's two different elections with two different ballots. Gotcha. I have a question. Um, would we have to have early voting with all three elections? 
So, no, early voting currently only applies to the biennial state election, so it'll be for the, um, the presidential election in November, but also the, uh, the general court just recently allowed, and well, required that it be done for five days prior to the primary in March. So the last week of February, we will have early voting just Monday through, uh, through Friday during normal business hours, but the local election would not qualify to actually be voted early. So anyone who voted early would still have to either vote absentee for the local election, or they would have to come to the polls on election day. Um, so this is a question, I don't know if, if any of our panelists can answer <coughs> to that, but maybe Mr. Herr. Um, how do we, forecast uh, bids that are more competitive in February than March. And is that a, do you, do you find that to be a true statement? So I've been in commercial construction for 30 some years and I don't think between February 3rd and March 3rd the bids would be any different. I didn't think so. Um, I do think, however, that as the school population is exploding, uh, every month of preparation leading up to next September mm -hmm. is important. So um, I'm not a big fan of having a second, well, a third. Third election. I mean, we just got done with a town meeting, you know, I'm still exhausted from that. So we're gonna have another one, if we had another one in February, let's say, so it'd be December, February, March, May. That sounds crazy. I, I think everyone will agree, that mm -hmm. sounds crazy, but it may be a reality. Um, I, I do think that each month leading up to September is huge though. So that's why I'd be open to another February meeting or election, if that's what we want to do. Um, however, the turnout for that is going to be extremely low. And I believe there's some risk in those questions uh, for the schools that they have to consider as they think about the turnout. Um, there's a political piece of this, and there's nothing wrong with talking about that. That's part of our job is to sort that out in town, is to understand sort of the general will and where people are in some of these things. I, I, I would be worried if I were the school committee members and the school administration that a low turnout could blow up in their face. Because if some folks decide, I'm putting my foot down on this and they get organized and they go out and raise some heck, mm -hmm. you know, turning out 300 people could kill the deal. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's gonna be a thousand people showing up. And if there's 500 people and 300 are motivated, uh, just to, they've had a, they're, they're kind of frustrated mm -hmm. for various reasons. And I think there's some legitimate reasons why people would be right now. Um, it would be a risk. So I think you guys should consider that. Do we have to set this tonight, Mr. Kamal? Are we, are, are we on a deadline here for setting a date and stuff? You, you have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, so I need to double check the calendar, but February 3rd deadline is pretty close. Um, so if you wanted to go that route, it would probably be prudent to decide tonight. If you wanted to discuss a different date further out, then you could go to your next meeting. So <clears throat> I would be more inclined to um, look towards a, the combined meeting of March 3rd. Um, I don't see a competitive savings, um, you know, the bid savings that would, that could justify the $10,000 or so that we're gonna spend on the election. Um, and I think that, to Mr. Hur's point, <coughs> um, the turnout for March 3rd will be extremely um, higher, much more high than, uh, than what the February 3rd is, is in my opinion, uh, based on the Democratic and the Republican people coming out, not us. I don't know folks like me. So. Right, we can stay home and <laughs> go up and just vote for the schools or against the, the schools. Fence types. Yeah, <laughs> us, us, us free thinkers. Um, so that's, um, that's my thought process. I do not speak for the board, but as the chair for the board, I will entertain a motion, if anyone would like to make one, uh, on any of these dates. May I just add that one more uh, plug just for the February 3rd or, you know, taking that a little bit more time if that's okay with the board. I think you brought some valid points here and, um, you know, the confusion aspect that 
is being clarified here. Um, if it's okay with the board, if you would give the school committee an opportunity to discuss this a little bit more, and uh, it seemed to me that you're open to either of those, uh, and if you would be okay with us coming back with a little bit more detail. The superintendent certainly strongly recommended February 3rd, uh, but I would really like it to be a combined date that we all agree on. So the superintendent, just to be clear, the superintendent would like us to vote quicker to give her her money sooner. So that's like asking your kids if you want to open the presents the night before well, Christmas, or do you want to wait till Christmas? But she's trying to get organized around September I one. It, it's, right, I don't okay, think yeah. it's, it, whether it's February third or March third wouldn't matter to anybody, except we're trying to get these things in here for March September one. So, Mr. Kamala, when do we meet again? Seventeenth yeah. January. If, if Seventh. I, yeah. If, if I may, through Seventh the chair, I I believe if we want February third. To be still an option, today is the day to vote. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think calendar-wise, Connor, we're just yeah. running out of time. Yeah. Well, and, it, and again, it, whatever we end up, whatever you folks end up deciding tonight, we'll get it done. That's not a concern. We'll yeah. make sure it gets done. So, I mean, uh, I'm. I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. I just think, for the town, as as someone who looks out for the best interest of the town, I think if we have a chance to save ten thousand dollars. Um, by combining it with the presidential um, primary, then uh, that's that's how I feel. But again, I will entertain a motion from anybody. I'd like to make a motion to uh, set the date for February third. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? I I just yeah. I I agree with them. Brian, I just don't think we're going to have a huge turnout on February 3rd. I think that the, given it's the primary, we're going to get a huge turnout. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a much better opinion of the, from the town for that election, and we're going to help save. <coughs> and I don't see February 3rd as, as a good date for an election, period. And, and it, I mean, the, the message was resounding. Whether pro we schools can, at, at yeah. uh, town meeting the other day. So I think the more people that are going to get there, the better it is, the better chances it is for you. But um, but, if, but if the school committee wants to go to February 3rd date, the sooner the better, then it's their resp they need to make sure that their supporters get to the right. polls. And that that's so, really easy to say. <laughs> so it's now, really hard to do. So what if they go back to the school committee and the school committee says, well, you know what, for the town, Let's save ten thousand dollars and do it in March, but we voted for February today. Well, I think we could cancel it. I think we could set the date for February third. Can you cancel it, Diggs? Cannot. Once you set the date and voted on a date, yeah. then it is locked yeah. in, and we have to have an election on that day. Okay. Well, let's think about that, though. We can't. We can't put off February third until January. That's for sure. So if we set the date today, and three days from now we find out that nobody wants to do it on the third. You can't change it. You can't bail out on it. You sure? Okay. Can we table this and then get the feedback from the school superintendent and then have a quick meeting on Friday? And so we have the feedback from the superintendent already. We don't have the feedback from the school committee. From the committee, yeah. Um, uh, I do not. I do not have the ability to get here Friday. I'm from Friday until January second. Uh, not going to be around. I think I think we don't have a formal vote of the school committee, but if my if, if I had to guess, I would think that at least four of those five, if not three of the five, definitely or three of the five, if not four of the five, would support the superintendent saying February third. They want to get going as soon they as they can, going. and it's not it's not about wasting ten grand in their minds. In my opinion, it's not about bidding it sooner because they think they can get a better thing. It's about timing to get lined up for September one, and I think. <laughs> As much as I don't want to do it on February 3rd, and I don't, I'd rather do it on March 3rd. Exactly. I, I really personally would do that. I think on behalf of our community and the schools and that September 1 deadline, which is going to come fast and furious, we've got to spend the 10 grand and get it done on the 3rd. But with the understanding that you've got to get people to show up, because that's going to be, we, we, have, we have town meeting fatigue right now. I love town meetings and I'm fed up with them. Right, so I can't imagine what, there's going to be some pushback on this. There will absolutely be some pushback on this one, mm -hmm. but I can understand why we're doing it. So there is a motion on the 
floor and it is seconded. Is there any further discussion? So the motion is to uh, have the special town election be set for February 3rd. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Oh, wait a minute. No. You're, yes? Yes. yes. Okay. All opposed? No. no. And so three to two carries. Good. There you go. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, annual town meeting. The annual town meeting will be held on May 4th, 2020. And the board will tonight, will vote tonight to open the warrant on January 2, 2020 or before. And to close the warrant at close of business on Friday, February 3, ah, the day that we're going to vote, 2020. Um, I will accept a motion. Mr. Catino. Uh, I, I'd like to make a motion to uh, sign the, uh, uh, just the, open the warrant. No, this is, oh yeah, to, to open the annual town meeting warrant on January 2nd and to close the warrant on February 3rd, 2020. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, one second here. Uh, so this is also when the board can start thinking about its own potential articles, including general bylaw changes. Are there any suggested articles from the board members that staff can start working on? There's a list in the packet that we've all kind of taken a look at. We can kind of we can look at that at our next meeting. Um, okay, all in favor? Um, uh, who said um? I did. Oh. <laughs> as far as adding uh, items, um, one thought I had was maybe changing the bylaws to raise the bar as to how we can overturn a town meeting vote, rather than just getting 200 signatures, make it a little more. Uh, can we do that here, or is that in the charter? I, I believe that is in the charter. I can check quickly. I don't think it's in the charter. I like it, though. I, think it's I like it a lot. I think, yeah, it, yeah. it just it, seems like 200 you know, signatures and petition is... Uh, and it's through state statute. And or, and yeah. or a civil majority. Yeah. If, if, if I may, uh, so there's nothing in the charter that explicitly states it. Um, there's nothing... It, in general, from what I've seen now, I'm sure Ray can give more info on it, but from what I've seen, for the most part, laws are silent on rescinding a vote. They talk about reconsideration, but not rescinding. Um, I mean, if I would go with to check with legal counsel first to make sure it's loud, but otherwise the town can make rules for its own procedures at town meeting and the bylaws. Awesome. Thank you. So, Mr. Kamala, maybe you can look into that with Mr. Mayeris. Yeah. Uh, uh, again, it, it, yeah. it, to be clear, it, the request is not only focused on a petition to rescind versus a general petition calling for a special town meeting. So I think that that's going to leave it wide open for, for some, some deliberation back and forth on how we, how we want to... Take a look at it. Yeah, I think, we, I mean, if we can get both, you know, just so we can, then we can kind of bat it around amongst the, the five yep. of us as to which way we want to go. Okay. My fear is that somebody else goes out and gets the 200 signatures to rename Hopkinton Catinoville <laughs> and uh, passes. Um, it's tough to spell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, we've got it. We've, uh, Put the motion out there. We've we haven't voted on it yet, have we? Okay. Any further this discussion? In the warrant. Yeah. Good. No further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed. Abstain. It carries. Good. Uh, so, Mr. Kamalo, I believe we are at the town manager's report. Yes. I just want to make sure um, that the the motion regarding the special town election date also included the board voting to sign the special town meeting warrant so we did not vote to sign the warrant okay. we voted to set the if date the board we can may go back be so inclined that. to move a okay. motion to yeah. sign yeah. the special yeah. town yeah. meeting uh, warrant through the chair then i'd like to uh, make a motion to sign the special town election warrant okay is it seconded um, uh, hang i'm i'm not clear on that i don't think mm. that we don't sign a warrant for an election we set the questions on the ballot. 
but there's not a warrant for the election, is there? There is. If I may. You may. Um, so there's a warrant for both town meetings and town elections that the select board call. And in this case, <coughs> there is a warrant that contains three questions that at your last meeting you set. And now you've set the date and you do have the option to sign the warrant this evening because you're all here and the, you've selected the date. So all the information, the questions and the date itself are all set for the, the warrant. So it is possible to sign it this evening so that we can get going on getting postings and stuff like that done for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's, uh, has it been seconded? The motion was made, has it been seconded? seconded. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? It carries. Good. Anything else, Mr. Kamalu? No, we're all set under the town manager's report. Uh, the Main Street Corridor project, as we know, the special town meeting affirmed Article 47 of 2018 annual town meeting. Uh, the undergrounding design and cost, this is a question that um, has come up repeatedly. Uh, again, to be clear, the costs that we have for the project are based on the 75% design. And even at the 75% design, we were still talking about the appraisal reports, the redesign of the utilities uh, and, and, uh, and by the utility companies. And so we, we, don't, we did not have those numbers until most recently we received the, um, the utility design costs from um, Eversource. Eversource, I said, Comtract and Comcast. We're still waiting for estimates from Verizon and Crown Castle. Our hope is that these numbers are the numbers we are going to build into the 100% design. Okay. <coughs> Environmental review, we're still waiting for the Federal Highway Administration's uh, final approval for the project. And in terms of additional plan revisions, we are now speaking with the owner of the Muffin House Cafe to see if there are any opportunities to um, enhance the parking in the vicinity of the Muffin House. Uh, one idea we have is contingent on what happens with the 2535 Main Street project. There was a proposal initially that uh, offered to close one of the driveways coming in and turn it into a walkway uh, connecting Main Street to the parking lot. If that idea moves forward, it will give us an opportunity to add a third parking spot that will service the Muffin House. Okay. It's always good. Yeah. And then um, FY 2021 budget update uh, included in your packet uh, is the list of projects that we have received uh, from the various town departments uh, is the full menu of our capital request for FY2021. Um, just want to mention a few that are worth noting. Uh, number one, the list I provided still includes the school projects that were approved at the special town meeting. So if everything goes well during the election, then these projects will come off the list. Good. Um, secondly, under the school, we also have listed the Elmwood Feasibility Study. Uh, this is on the list because of the decision that we received from the MSBA saying we did not qualify. Right. In addition, um, there is a $4 million uh, project to replace the roof uh, at the Elmwood School. Um, again, these are the projects that have been brought forth. On the town side, Center School Reuse. We issued an RFP about three months back. Uh, there were multiple inquiries. However, there was no one submitted a proposal. We reissued the RFP, and I think we have six solid submissions that the Permanent Building Committee will be reviewing shortly. Um, and based on the outcome of that process, uh, we may be requesting a $15 million project for the center school. However, all of this is subject to the select board uh, approval. Uh, the rest of the requests are pretty much standard. Um, we have our DPW requests, 
uh, as well as uh, this regular request from the police department for three replacement uh, crosses. Mr. Kamalo, going back to the center school reuse, um, I gave it a second for the people that just heard it on TV, that the $15 million after they fell for them to get up, catch their breath. Um, have we, can you tell us a little bit about what the, uh, what our plans are for center school reuse for that $15 million? Yeah, um, and Elaine, feel free to jump in through here with the chair's permission. The general recommendation that came from the advisory team, the center school reuse advisory team, was to continue the municipal uses at the site. Yep. My understanding is that the RFP <coughs> has offered three options to get to that goal. Okay. Okay. So who's submitting these RFP? Who's submitting these these proposals? Then is it is it public entities within the town, or is it private entities that are going to? I don't understand. There's an architecture and an engineering firms. Uh, we are asking for ideas that can get us to re-establishing the building for municipal uses. Okay, so architectural so and engineering firms will submit proposals. So yeah. that to me sounds a little bit presumptuous because this board that I don't recall us ever making the determination that it's going to remain a public building. I think we have to determine if we're going to hold the asset or if we're going to sell the asset before we go out and say, let's get $15 million to convert the asset for a public use. Yes, I think as I said, that the $15, the $15 million request is subject to the select board's approval. Why this is being done is that when the report by the center school reuse advisory team was submitted to the board, the board said, but what does this cost? That's exactly what this process will provide, the actual cost. Of so we're going to we're going to have lengthy discussions about this long before it gets to uh, onto the town meet onto the town warrant. Correct. So I'm sorry, I'm confused about what this 15 million is for. 15 million is what we're saying. It's a placeholder. Let's let's remember the 15 million is a placeholder. It was based on some preliminary cost estimate when we did the initial review of what could happen to the building. So the final number can be bit bigger, or it could be lower. Could, it, it, yeah, exactly. We'll find out from this RFP process. Okay. I'm not advocating that we sell the building, and I guess I don't want people to <laughs> perceive me as saying, "What do you mean? We haven't decided to keep this thing yet." But we haven't decided to keep this thing right. yet. So I want to make sure we follow the process that we outlined several years ago um, as to how we were going to look at this. Yeah. And it was that study committee, mm -hmm. and they came back with some great ideas. And then it was handed over to the building, permanent building committee. I think that was in a joint meeting. We all sat around the table together <coughs> yes. and had some discussion. And then it kind of went into Never Never Land. And now I'm hearing, well, we need maybe $15 million to keep it for a public use. I don't think we've closed the loop on whether we're going to have it for a public use. And in fact, the last time I think we talked about it, most, much of the discussion was, if we keep it, are we going to blow up the middle building or right. just keep the gym in the front right. building? Right. What level and then make the rest use? of it a park. That's kind of like the last thing I heard of. And now we seem to be getting ahead. Somebody's ahead of themselves, in my opinion, here. No. I'm not saying it's you, Mr. Kamala. I've never it, said it's, that. This, 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 is, this is... Tell us what... That we're going to have all these proposals with different cost estimates and we'll be able to make a determination as to which one do we like and what are we going to do with it. Am I right? The $15 million number is a result of good planning. There was a preliminary estimate that was generated by the architectural firm that we were working with before. And now why this is in this list is because we have a process in town with deadlines for submitting capital requests. That's exactly why this number is here, because we had to submit, the facilities department had to meet the deadline for submitting its um, uh, capital requests. That gym is in tough shape. My kid had, yeah. had practice there the other day, and then the close to the middle, the, the floor is humped okay. two yeah. feet. 
Yeah. I heard it kind of exploded. Or mm. Yeah, yeah it, it, to Mr. Hurst's point, I, I just want to know, you know, what the what the 15 gets us. You know, what I would have wanted to see is what will five million get us? What's a 10 million get us? What's 15 get us? What's 20 get us? Because they, the, the, the reuse committee came up with, with a, 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 a treasure trove of, of uh, things for different departments. You know, every department wanted to do something and, you know, and, and if we did everything there, we'd be adding on to that building. But did we That's table the idea that we would never even consider selling it? No, I don't believe we ever table. I don't think we ever made any decision. I think it was just, uh, am I forgetting something? No, no yeah, yeah. No, so then one of, the, one of the scenarios has to be, okay, we need a $15 million option for a public use of this space, and this is the things that we can do with it, spending that $15 million bucks, fix the gym and do a nice office out front and stuff like that, and, it, and preserve the facade. Mm -hmm. Or we can get $7 million bucks and we sell it. We can take $7 million in. That, I don't know what the number is. Is it if it's a hundred grand because it's just it'd be a nightmare for someone else to do it? Then obviously we wouldn't do that either. But we need to know that. That the last part of your comment was not conveyed to the permanent building committee. The permanent building committee That's is right. looking at different options that can get us to reestablishing that facility. Is a municipal facility. okay so yes. that's where i'm concerned i'm either forgetting something yeah that i or we just didn't do that part yeah that part was not done but don't you think that should have been done Did i believe i believe that the, the uh, leading to the charge that the select board gave to the permanent building committee there was dis a discussion very limited discussion on other uses besides the municipal use. However, when the charge needed to be, at the time the charge was given to the Permanent Building Committee, the focus was strictly on the municipal use. Okay, so if I could, Mr. Chair, one last time. Keep rolling. When we started this process, the advisory group did a great job. And they came back with several options, and they came back with a lot of folks on that group leaning towards continued municipal use. Leaning that was the towards, Rick group, right? That was the Rick Flannery, Ken Weissmantel group, and, and several other dedicated people. They were leaning towards continuing with us holding it. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, hmm. we then had the Permanent Building Committee come in, and we all sat around the table and said, this is what the advisory group is suggesting. We'd like you guys to check it out. But until the board makes a final determination about the, the outcome of that building, and I think takes it to town meeting, because I don't think we should be making a decision like that on our own uh, if we were to sell it um, or if we're going to develop it for municipal use, we would kind of reserve judgment until some date, in the, some date in the future. So I guess what I'm, that's the last I remember us discussing it really. Mm -hmm. And then it's been in the permanent building committee's hands, but now what you're coming and saying to me tonight is, and maybe I'm hearing it wrong, we're going to keep it as a municipal building, and we think we might need 15 million bucks to fix it up. But I don't know, there's a piece of it missing for me, is what's the value of that building in the real market if we were to sell it? This is an additional question that we can ask the permanent building committee to pursue. That was not part of their charge. Well, if I may through the chair, because I do remember that when we were appointing the um, reuse committee, one of the questions I remember that we asked each one of them, would you be open to also um, selling the building? And everybody said, no, if, if, if that's what it ends up being, if it ends up costing too much, then yes, we will we'll look at that. And so, that's, so for me, that the whole thing was, I just wanted the permanent building committee to come back with, given given this use plus this use plus this use, it's going to cost this much, yeah, or, or four uses, or, or if we take out the middle, it's going to cost this much, and and then j just so people at town meeting or, or the people in the community would know what the actual cost for whatever it is. Is this going to be an office building, or is it going to? Are we getting a new gym out of this? Are we getting, uh, you know, uh, better storage for for the for uh, the land use department and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. To be clear, with regard to Mr. Hare's question, 
we did not ask the Permanent Building Committee, or rather the Select Board did not ask the Permanent Building Committee to find out what the market rate for that property might be. However, in answer to Mr. Cortino's question, yes, that is being looked into. The RFQ, RFQ specifically looks into or ask the proponents to consider the future of center school um, and the options that, that could be established, including but not limited to potential municipal use, housing, mixed use, redeveloping part or all of the current buildings as well as demolishing part or all of the buildings and to propose only options with realistic possibilities for implementation that will also benefit the town economically. So in answer to your question, the charges to establishing the, the actual value of the building was, is not part of this process. But in answer to your question, yes, they will be looking at a wide range of options. So that process you just read there, that's the process the Permanent Building <laughs> Committee has been working under? Yes. So in that, in my opinion, is what's the fair market yeah. value of the building too? Okay. Because if we don't answer it here, it's going to be asked at town meeting for sure. Someone's going to go to the microphone and say, why are we even keeping this thing? What's it worth? We need to have that answer. And I thought that would come as part of this discussion because this board has never deliberated if we're even going to take something to town meeting right now that I'm aware of. I, I don't know if this is necessarily pertinent, but just to, to find out what the market value is, I would agree with that. But how do we market it? Uh, if we do decide to market it, then what kind of restrictions can we put on a new owner? Uh, we don't want a six-story apartment building there, do we? No. We don't want CVS or, or something like that, but it's a town common. It's, it's a historical uh, district, so whatever goes in there has got to fit with the histor historical well, district There is the precedent because we sold the old high school. So there's precedent, you know, it, it, what's that, 77, 77 main? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, no, it's 85 main. Oh, 85 main. I don't, I don't think there's any member of this board that sold the old high school. I think that that spent, that was done no, I understand. decades ago. Well, no, 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 yeah. I understand that, like but, but there was precedent. 40 years ago, at least, I would say, is when... Carrigan Park was, or the old high school was sold to private industry. So, so my line of questions is not because I want to sell that building. Oh, no, I understand. I personally, please, to be clear, I do not want to sell that building, but I want to look at all the options all the and make options. sure the yeah. taxpayers understand Absolutely. all the options before yeah. I say again in some formal vote, no, I don't want to sell that building. Right. Yeah. I also don't want to tear down that front part of the building no matter what happens to it. Right. So if we were to sell it, which I doubt would ever happen, right. there would be some kind of caveat that says the front of that building looks exactly the way it does today. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. I'm saying. So How just to exactly. alleviate oh, no, any fears yeah. that we're going to go pave it over and put up a, six, a Boston right. City Hall over there or something hideous like yeah. that. I'm all for making an informed decision and knowing like, all facts. what all the facts right. are. Yeah, we need everything. Yeah. So can we talk so, about this at another meeting? Yeah. Yes, and again, to be clear to the public, what the Permanent building committee is looking into uh, the options where the, the town can dispose of the building, which is what we're emphasizing. Right. Re re redevelop the property or establish a municipal use. Okay, so get the first question answered. It sounds like okay. they're just talking about the second, too. Okay. I'm not blaming anybody, I just don't think maybe we were clear. Yep. All right. We're good? Uh, no, I have one other question. We mentioned Eversource. Uh, and at the town hall, the town corridor. I would like an update on what has happened over there with the tank from the fire chief or from Eversource itself. Or we, we heard that there was a problem and that they were fixing it, but we've never heard that it's been done, it hasn't been done. That's what under kind the, I think that's under the made, future board. And board. I think the town deserves a report. Oh, yes. Okay. How about we put that as a future board agenda item? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Future board agenda item? Yeah. Fine, yeah. <laughs> Liaison reports. I, uh, if, you, if, I, if I may, I went to the, yesterday the Board of Health meeting, and uh, due to the, the outstanding work that they've done in the Stop Vaping program, 
they've been approached by uh, a couple of large Boston hospitals to be part of a uh, of a grant um, looking into uh, other uh, uh, safety uh, aspects for the, for the town. Good. And um, also met uh, with the uh, Weeds Committee, and they'd like to come in and do a presentation that they did at at, at the required public hearing, because after after their exhaustive research and, and all, they're ready to uh, make recommendations to the um, uh, DPW director to uh, uh, move on. And they would like to uh, do a presentation to us at the next uh, at our next meeting, so that uh, they know where. So we can get that on the next agenda. That was the only two I did yesterday. That's it yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I have none. Why do I keep calling you Mr. Kamala tonight? I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sestari? Only you can answer that. that. <laughs> yes. He's got a thick beard right now. I, I can't grow. Um, I have no liaison reports. I, um, John and I were at the police stakeholders meeting. Oh, yeah. That was really uh, very interesting. A lot of information. And a very informative meeting. That's, that's all so, that I have to report on it. It was. Um, so I did not go to any um, liaison uh, meetings because all of our effort was kind of focused on town meeting over these last three or four weeks. So uh, I did not get to any. However, I would like to applaud the uh, the attendance from the town people at town meeting, uh, having gone to town meeting for 42 plus years, uh, I, I can remember only one time with more uh, attendance at the town meeting than there was uh, here. And that other, that other meeting was a regular scheduled town meeting. This was a special and um, uh, I, I, bravo to everybody involved uh, getting their, their people out to, to vote for or against these articles, and uh, it just showed that uh, democracy is alive and well in Hopkinton. Uh, hearing that, any future board agenda items we've already talked about? Yes, sir. Sure, come on up. Mr. Chair, while he's getting settled, um, I would like to make sure that Mr. Kamalo, as part of his town manager's report under the corridor project <laughs> update, which is a regular standing item now, that we can get an uh, update from VHB, five bullet points, six bullet points. This is what's been done in the last two weeks since I, we, they last reported to you. We need to see this thing moving through the plan process to get to 100%, to get the bid, to get awarded. Marathon so day. If we can get VHB to help you with your report to us each meeting, that would be great. In fact, the reports that I provide are built from uh, bullet points provided by VHB. Okay. We need to make sure that this thing is bid soon. soon. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mahesh from 16 Redwood Path. So this is re extension to the Article 6, which we have in special town meeting. What's your um, For the Legacy Farms now, again, we start putting onto our agenda items. So, so there, uh, Eileen has sent us 10, 10 points and a forward to the chair, yep. the 10 points. And we need to put some timelines to get onto the annual town meeting, um, again. We have very short period, like it's, we have only four months from now, unless we put this item, otherwise it, it'll, it'll push beyond annual town meeting. So um, this was a, an email that Elaine sent to Ravi. Um, Elaine, these points that are here, are, do, they need, do they need to go sequentially? So the process starts with the, uh, the plan received from the developer. So once we get that, Street acceptance plan, everything flows from there. So, so we need right to now we're waiting on Mr. McDowell, is it? Mm -hmm. So once we get the, we, we can't pressure Mr. McDowell, he, he's going to have to get it in uh, on his own volition. Uh, and then we'll send the, uh, it'll go to the planning board, who will send it to its engineer for review. Um, and then, uh, you know, typically the planning board is the board that proposes a town meeting article to accept a street. Uh, and then after that's done, then it goes to the select board. Uh, we hold a public hearing on the proposed street acceptance. So, um, you know, I would say the urgency, I, I, I mean, we're almost in January now. Uh, I would, and the warrant closes February 3, so you get a month. 
I would definitely, um, you know, I would talk to Mr. McDowell and see uh, how quickly he can turn around his aspect. And then I think that there's probably, based on what I just heard from Elaine, a, a, a few of us can kind of work in conjunction at, at the same time. So the onus right now is on Mr. McDowell. Do we have a timeline for Mr. McDowell? Anybody talked to him lately about what his plan is? We have spoken with him. I know that he's working with his engineer to get the plan done. Okay. Could we go ahead and, go, and, and assure these folks that we could do a, a, a placeholder on the warrant? So we can get a placeholder on the warrant, even if we don't have all the facts figured out just yet. So we, the town manager's office could do that, right? We will work with the planning board. Or the planning board could do it. Either way, let's just make sure we do a placeholder to get the, keep, at least start that piece of the puzzle. Yep. And then... Um, <clears throat> We're all clearly behind you. There's no... Right. I, I, just to add to the point, yesterday I went to the planning board meeting, and then Roy is there. Roy said, like, a, he's going to submit the plans as soon as possible. That's what he said in yesterday, yesterday meeting. So, and again, two things. I mean, again, if it slips, again, he said, like, the, the payment of the road, actual work, will be done on the April. I don't know. So, in that 10 steps, that after submitting the plans, does the, does the, Pavement need to everything need to happen and then need to go through the process. I don't know exactly the dates and all the stuff there. I don't know. So, so, so as a select board member, that's outside of the four corners of what we look at. Mm -hmm. But Elaine, you might be able to. The pavement can go in April if it needs to. Okay. But for us, we have two more meetings before that deadline. So, uh, the third and the twenty-first. So, it's all on Mr. McDowell at this point. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Seeing everything is done, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh, I have Mr. something Chairman. to say first. You are not recognized. <laughs> 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 no, I just want to wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Good Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating, Festivus. and and most of all, an extremely productive and happy New Year. Roger that. Thank you, Mary Jo. Merry Christmas. So I had a motion. I don't know. It was seconded. No further discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, abstain. It carries. Thank you.